Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Samira Tilly, Marketing Manager at Assemble Systems. Our webinar today will focus on the Assemble's integration with Power BI. It is my pleasure to introduce you to Tim Kelly, Product Manager at Assemble. Go ahead, Tim. Thank you, Samira. All right, so to kick off today, I just want to step through a quick and brief agenda. For those of you that are unaware of Assemble, I'll give a brief high-level introduction of our product. Um, and then, uh, those of you unaware of Power BI, I want to talk about what that product is and how we've worked to integrate our solution with them. As many of you do know, Assemble is a web-based product um, that ultimately you publish your information to from your model data. Uh, from Revit or AutoCAD, you're ultimately able to push that information into our environment and manage uh, condition and change or edit or use that data and share that out with the rest of your team. Uh, so with it being a web-based product, that means that you can invite others in and there's no need for them to install or download um, any software to get access to that information. Uh, similarly, uh, Power BI is a Microsoft solution that is web-based and uh, for your users to access that information, it's all online. So you're gonna create uh, your reports and your dashboards uh, through their desktop product, and, and we'll go through that in just a minute, and then you can ultimately uh, share that out with your team and provide access through uh, both uh, web and mobile devices. So it's really simple to use and ultimately uh, delivers uh, your information in, in graphical format and, and easy to consume and drill down uh, within those reports. So, so Power BI as a solution, if you think about it, is all of the the power and capability out of out of Excel and in the reporting format. So you can you can manipulate data, you can drill into data, uh, and you can ultimately connect different data sources into one environment. Uh, so it's it's really a, a reporting and analytics engine. Uh, so our integration with Power BI is uh, providing uh, information across your models and your uh, model versions into that system. So the way we do that is uh, through actually a new feature provided from uh, Microsoft Power BI called Custom Connectors. And we've created a custom connector that allows uh, uh, secure access uh, through a login uh, into your assembled data and uh, you're able to consume that information within the Power BI environment and uh, report on that. And, and ultimately, it, you're able to connect that information to other data sets as well. Um, that information is dynamic. You are able to drill into that and step through uh, different layers. And so if you have just a really simple version, we'll show today is category, family type. Uh, if you're familiar with Revit, that's kind of the core structure. Uh, you can start at a category level, drill down to the family, down to the type level, and ultimately to the instance level. Um, so that is, um, in that dynamic nature, you're able to, to reach in to get down to the uh, particular data set and then come right back out as needed. Uh, it's similar to within Assemble, uh, one of our core capabilities in drilling in or uh, group sort and filter your information. We always talk about group sorting and filtering. Um, this is doing it in a report fashion, so you're able to uh, see visuals and connect uh, different pieces of information uh, whenever you do that drill down. So if you're wanting to share your project information with the rest of the team, whether that be the architect or uh, the owner or subcontractors or your executive team members. Uh, this is a really good way because it, it's a summary level graph that is, you know, pie charts and uh, bar charts and, and right in their face and they're able to ask questions about it essentially and, and take a step down deeper as needed. And it, whenever you need to take a step in, it actually uh, reacts across the product depending on how you, you set up those graphics. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and step into our demonstration today. So I'm going to start within uh, the Power BI desktop product. And the desktop product is really where you uh, get all of your information set up and connected and, and prepare your reports before you publish them to the web. So we'll start with our data set. Um, coming out of Assemble, we have um, your, your model information that's managed within versions. And within each of those versions, properties in the data sets are essentially managed on instances. So right here, we're down at the instance level of data, and we are looking at you know, different tables. And we have um, uh, lots of different tables that 
that will pull together uh, to create your, your combined data set. If you look at um, the relationships between those tables, you're able to see that you have your project a high level, uh, you have your model, and then your model version that then connects to your grid data. The grid data in this case, if I were to kind of explain it really simply, um, if you're familiar with the symbol, um, this is going to be pretty straightforward. If you're not, I'm going to kind of share it and show it really quickly. Within a symbol, we have views and we have models, and those models are containers for model versions. And so if I were to uh, open this up, you can see that that particular model architecture main has many versions. And if we step into um, a version of that model, we're going to get our inventory to load. When the inventory loads, we, we call that uh, inventory or grid. And uh, what you're able to do within the grid is filter this information down based on visibility settings or properties, um, and then turn on or off columns of data. And what we're doing is replicating this experience in Power BI where I can select which columns of data I'm interested in, or which properties I want to see um, out of all of my model properties. And then I can also specify which versions and which um, models overall I'm interested in looking at. So in Power BI, you're able to see all of that information, and I'm in a query here. You're able to see that um, you have your grid data, you have your available properties, um, you specify which properties you're interested in using, uh, you have your model versions. Um, ultimately, you have all of the different individual versions that are mapped to then the model containers. Um, so all of that mapping is actually done before we send you guys the template. So if you're interested in using uh, the Power BI connection that we're providing, uh, we're going to provide you with the template that already has this mapping created. So when we get into the visuals of this, um, at a high level, we've created some um, fairly generic um, review of the information. And this is totally customizable. So what we're looking at here are a couple of different um, graphs and, and reports. And within the overview page here, you're able to see that information. Um, and if I select a chart, you can see that within my fields, I have you know, some components or pieces selected. And then within each of these charts, you can see what I'm using as my axis, as my filters, if those are specific to the visual or page-wide, or ultimately they're report-wide. You're able to um, specify exactly how you want the entire report, the entire page, or an individual uh, graphic uh, to respond to the rest of the selection. So if I'm to go in and just simply create something here, um, I'm, I'm looking at Within this particular model, I have some information about the trades, uh, about the installation date within the activities. And so I can simply set up you know, the interaction between three graphs here, where I have uh, identified percent installed, um, which is a uh, formula based on uh, when it was installed versus if it has not yet been installed. And then I have the different trades broken down over that installation date over time. And so if I'm to select a trade here, you can see that I have some quantity installed at some point in time. And I can even drill down a little further here and get uh, kind of production rates across uh, days. And so I can see that I had 106 cubic yards uh, installed on December 17th of 2016. So I can quickly isolate you know, what, how much of that pie that is. Um, and, and then if I'm selecting this, I can see of the peers, I have a total of 35% complete uh, for that particular trade. So that interaction, let's, let's kind of take it a step further. And I'm going to go ahead and move over to the web side of things. Uh, we go through the process, and we, uh, we we're able to publish this out to the rest of our team, and they can come in and consume this information. Um, so the interaction between the graphics here is, is, as I was kind of mentioning, I can step through this and actually drill in. Um, so when I drill in, we've set this up where I've selected ceilings and I've drilled down to the type name. And I can see as I select um, a particular type, this is looking at individual versions and how that information is across many versions of my models. Uh, within each of these, I have the ability to use the actual um, grid here to filter information, or I can specify filters within our, our high level, and, and that is 
it's going to do it across the entire page. So getting down then to uh, some more kind of specific workflows in this, a lot of our customers today are interested in uh, 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 leveraging uh, information across versions to understand how the project is progressing. So in our product, we have the ability to uh, manage that at each individual version. And you're kind of seeing that here within our trend of those individual versions. Uh, but sometimes it's difficult to see uh, within a model how things change. So we've created a really simple one here that has your overall information about the, the total quantity and then the, the deltas here. So I have my previous quantity, I have my current quantity, and I can look at my percent difference. So if I actually filter or sort by percent difference here, I can see um, how much has changed within any given model. So I can see that if I select this and I drill down into that particular model, I can see what categories and what types have changed. So within my, my flooring here, I have this to drill down in. And I can see that uh, we've added for this particular model a uh, new topping slab. And so again, those are you know interactive between that and a little bit uh, in, a, in a fashion dynamic where I can use uh, one chart to filter down and then the other to dig into the data. All right, so another particular use case that we've talked to customers about and, and gotten a lot of good feedback on is the ability to look at and, and understand how um, your data is being conditioned or plugged in. And um, one of the most common uh, comments that we hear about models coming from the design community is that uh, it, it can be difficult to look at different properties and understand what's there. Um, what's complete, what's been filled in, what's missing. Um, and this is just a really simple and quick example of um, conditioning that data once you get that model and you want to plug in new information. So within this uh, here, we can see that we've selected three properties, assembly code, bid package, and unit cost. And of the model set that we have, if we look at our individual models, I've got uh, structure MAP, um, architecture, and a few others in there that can actually drill down and just select those. And I can see that across those models, I actually have 46%, uh, 47%, and 19% coded with that information that I'm going to rely on. And what's important here is that if I'm using this uh, bid package to organize and understand uh, what I've done in the job or how I'm pushing this out to my subcontractors if I'm using that information to share. I really quickly know and I understand that I haven't finished this and I shouldn't rely on this information until it's done. And so you can you can you know take a particular model and drill down into that model and see you know where you finish things and what categories or what families uh, haven't received that information, or uh, if you use a different grouping mechanism, what uh, you know what models or instances need to receive that condition. So. Uh, just, just at a high level, and I want to back up for a second and go back to here. Um, we're going to create a new simple chart. At a high level, the idea is that we can use any properties to um, bring in and break down the information and create graphics. So I'm going to start really simply and just select trade. And I'm going to change this to a donut. And um, I can go grab a measure, I can grab quantity. Just going to select this and grab quantity. And just by um, grabbing a few uh, pieces of data, I'm able to start to understand um, the organization of the information across my project. Um, I can then go in and use uh, version information from my models to filter and drill down. And I can start to uh, populate this information. So it's really simple to get started and make these interactions work. 